Um, my name is Alex Shen. I'm the uh, project chief designer on the Fuse project. I'm Bob Mochizuki. I'm an exterior designer here at Kelty. I've always been interested in mechanical things. I started getting into cars uh, probably through high school when I got my license. Got my first car and I started playing with it and adding stuff on it and joining car clubs. On top of that, you know, tuning cars and so forth all through kind of high school days. Drawing since I was a little kid. You go up to the, the student gallery and uh, you see all this beautiful car artwork. I found out that you don't have to be an engineer to design cars and it involves not much math and I can draw, so perfect combination. It, it just kind of clicked, that's, that's what I wanted to do. Um, you know, it didn't seem like a job for me, it was more like a fantasy where you could draw cars and get paid at the same time. Eventually I just landed uh, Kelty as a car designer. And you know, having fun still doing it after so many years. The coolest part of my job is I get to draw cars all day and think about cars when I'm not working and I get paid for it. Basically, all the designers here are, are I think, car freaks first and then designers second. Can't get better than that. What typically happens is we, we get a project from our top management. It usually comes from what, uh, either overseas in, in Toyota, Japan, TMC or it might be initiated from uh, Toyota Motor Sales, uh, particularly the Advanced Product Strategy Group. So um, when we got the project, we knew it was a show car, which is exciting at first. Um, then we found out it was a Scion project, which is even you know better. Um, we know what Scion's about. We've been working with Scion brands. Um, I was a chief on the T2B as well, so we knew um, there's a lot of flexibility, a lot of open kind of um, exploration. Scion is so such a new brand, it's so open that everything's possible and they're looking for many new things. So it's the biggest obstacle is that first step in trying to find something fresh and new. Yeah, this, this project in particular, we involved um, basically all our young designers in the studio because it's a, it's a beautiful product. What is the development of the concept of art? I think they all start in a similar fashion. Somebody has an idea, an assignment, for example, of, you know, let's try to create a vehicle for this type of market. There's a whole bunch of market research, all that blah, blah, fun stuff that has to go into it. And what we do is we, we kind of look at the market condition, we look at what we know as kind of car freaks, you know, and, and designers as well. And um, we try to inject as much as, 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 much as uh, we can into the project, you know, from a personal level. It was exciting when I first heard about the project, but then again, we have to compete against each other. So that was a big challenge there because there's so many talented people in the studio. Basically, uh, what we did was we, we started out with the concept. We got all the young talent in, and, and we plastered the walls with you know hundreds of sketches. And you come up with what they call concept sketches. Usually, it's you know people draw up a bunch of stuff and then direct certain directions are picked. So we had tons of work that that was uh, that we had to choose from. These, these series of drawings and sketches and rendering represents um, kind of the total project uh, um, flow um, of how we kind of come to the, the, the piece design. Um, some of these renderings represent uh, um, kind of a theme, some of these, rep uh, some of these represent detailed development. Um, for instance, this sketch here was the original sketch that was chosen as the, uh, the key sketch that we developed in Car, car, car On. So um, it really shows the horizontal motion and the kind of the race car or racing helmet inspired cabin um, with a kind of extreme wedge type uh, silhouette. And take it to the next level with a little bit more detail so we can really get an idea of the entire um, scope and, and feel of the car. So you can kind of see this, this rendering we used to develop the model really kind of came to fruition um, for us and, and we kind of hit it right on the uh, right of the mark with this rendering. So we had a, probably the most designers on, on the exterior portion that we were have. And what did you do a bunch of concept models and you know there's various degrees on how those models are, are actually generated. And you know, we narrowed down to five scale models and that was even a, a pain to try to get some good, uh, try to select one, you know that was kind of the difficult part. Um, my design was picked, so 
I was primarily responsible for the exterior design. When you think about it, I mean, how many different ways can you design a car? It's really hard to, yeah, be, think of something that probably never, no one's ever thought of before. As far as the look of the car, I mean, it's always got two wheels and, you know, I mean, four wheels and it's always got, you know, a window, it's got a passenger compartment. It just, it's really hard to, to say that there's going to be a whole new shape or a whole new look or anything. The original sketch was probably this big. That was just doodling somewhere, I don't even remember, but it all started from there. So throughout the development, it was, it was kind of a, um, I guess, a, a dream scenario for this building because everybody's so excited about the project. So it was a very exciting project to start off with, but um, you know, then we had to get to work and come up with something, something creative. Everybody was, was jazzed and then we were ready to go. I guess the most difficult part is always the development of 3D model because it's hard to translate kind of the, the 2D sketch to the 3D model that you see behind. You know, constantly designers and people that, that are into cars just ton, constantly rubbing the car. I mean, they want to feel that surface. They want to feel, you know, sexiness of the curb or the little brake line and stuff. It's, it's really, it is, I mean, it's, the analogy is like that guys can relate to that, but it's a, it's a real tactile thing. You know, a lot of times in the smaller scale models, they're looking at the general shape of the vehicle. They're not really concentrating on the headlights and taillights because a, a headlight at core scale is like minuscule. I mean, you can't get into the details of it. Sometimes they'll, they'll actually go into a half scale or something larger than a quarter scale just, just to start to bring up the size closer to the actual size. When you go from something quarter size to full size, a lot of things happen in the translation. You know, things get actually blown out of proportion. Something that looked good in, in one quarter size looks absolutely ridiculous in full size. So you go back in there, you tune that vehicle up. We did most of the design changes and, and, and tuning on 50%. We do a, a lot of different types of scales to realize the project. And this represents um, our final stage of the 50% scale model. This is actually painted, painted clay, similar to what you see there. Um, we try to dress it up with all the details and, and you know, all the details and finishes on there so we can really get a, a, a complete idea of what the car looks like. Although this looks like a full-size model, it's a, it's a half scale. And after that, we, we, we make a kind of a prove out styrofoam model in full size just to evaluate the mass and, and uh, proportion and all that. See, because the, the ultimate way to judge anything is of course in the actual scale. Once they get into the larger details, the, the I mean, larger vehicles, the details start to get more and more precise. I mean, then they start worrying about headlights, everything down to the knobs, you know, to the, the door lock, things like that. And a full size, size model is built. Again, it, it can be built in clay, it can be milk cut from from in a harder surface. When we go into a full-size one-to-one clay, uh, basically it's a property to hand off to the builder and they could take molds off of it and use that as a basis for you know all the engineering and everything. So the whole process from design to hand off to, um, to the vendor, it's usually around, I would say four months, four or five months. And then the build typically at the, at the vendor, which is five axis on this one, it's usually a 24 to 26 week build from nothing to complete. So that's a pretty quick process.